Hi, my name is Cody and I'm with LaunchDarkly. We've talked a lot about the different ways that people can bring feature flags into their software development. We've talked about changing the way a web page looks, maybe replacing a logo or a header value, or even going into an API and replacing functionality with a feature flag so that we can drive a new capability to a specific user group. Another way that people use feature flags is to drive configuration changes down to endpoints based on the users that are coming in. Specifically, I think about the use case of having a user receive a different API endpoint than a different type of user. Maybe dev users getting a, a special dev API or secondary dev API, or even US West users receiving a US West database. LaunchDarkly makes it easy to do that and roll that change out progressively, but more importantly, it gives you tools to roll it back when something goes wrong. In this video, we're going to show how we can move from using my Postgres database locally that I've used in the past few demos to moving to using one in Amazon RDS instead. Let's jump in and take a look. Here we have the application that we've been working with so far. It's a Flask API written in Python, and it interacts with a specific endpoint database. That database is running locally on my workstation, and we want to look to change that because that just seems like a bad idea to keep doing. That database is interacted through the slash users endpoint that has git, post, and delete support. We added that delete support in as well as a maintenance mode flag in in our last video. We're going to use the maintenance mode a little bit in this video as well. We've already got the launch darkly client set up and we're bringing in that config as part of that user's route. Again, storing the SDK key in this way probably isn't the best idea, but it's just a demo, so we're good to move forward with it. We've also set up a little bit of a basic authentication, I use that in air quotes, uh, configuration around understanding the headers for the name and the users group. We use those to set the launch darkly user so we can do targeting rules off of it. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and do our migration to a cloud-based database. But first we wanna go ahead and bring in this maintenance mode. We've used it previously to shut off the API so that if anybody tries to consume it, they get a message kind of gently telling them that, hey, this is down in maintenance mode. I'm gonna go ahead and start calling this API so we can see that happen live. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell this to repeat on a one second interval. We can see that's calling now. And we're gonna switch into launch darkly and we're gonna turn on that maintenance mode flag. We switch back, we can see the databases, or the not database, the API is now in maintenance mode. So it's not able to be accessed, but it's still returning that it exists. It's not like we're getting a 404 not found. So we'll stop that from calling. We don't need to keep calling it while we're running in maintenance mode for now. We've already set up our database in Amazon and I've verified that it's up and running. So the next step is to get that brought into our code in some sort of way that doesn't break everything. We'll need to update this connection string because right now it's pointed statically at localhost as well as statically at local DB. So we'll wanna bring in some new information there. Additionally, our schema has changed in the new database. So we'll need to add in another column here because we wanna be able to not just track users, but we also wanna track the location and the region they're coming in from. So the first things first, we're gonna go ahead and create a new feature flag to support making this change. So we're gonna name this DB info and we'll call it DB info here. We'll use our handy user object that we've used so many times before now. And in this case, we're gonna bring in a different type of a fallback flag. I'm gonna temporarily name this one fallback, and we're going to use this fallback value placed up here. Again, typically we'd get this from somewhere else. Uh, in this case, we're just setting up here to be to make it a simple demo, but this fallback value is effectively gonna provide down a set of connection details that we can use in the event that launch darkly isn't reachable. So it'll default back to the local database for now. So with that in place, we can go ahead and go into launch darkly and create this flag. So create flag db info. Now, since we're going to be pushing down configuration changes this time, we're going to change this from a Boolean to a string flag so that we can actually bring down that string value. We're going to add in a description, connection details for database. And we're going to work with two different variations here. The first variation is going to reference our cloud database. So this has an Amazon address in it and then the new database name. And then the second variation is going to be our local on-prem database. We'll name this one cloud and then laptop for the off state. 
We'll go ahead and save this flag for creation and it's in place now. Before we move forward, I'm going to drop back into variations and take a look at this in a little bit of a bigger view. We can see that, as I mentioned before, I'm pushing in a JSON object into this. We're going to be able to use that JSON object in Python and parse out the information we need so we can actually treat this more like a connection string. This is a different way to use a feature flag than we typically reflect on, but it's a good way to push down multiple different configuration options that you might want to play with. I'll switch back into my application code and we'll start using this now. Since this is a JSON object, we need to actually convert it from a string into a JSON object because when it comes in from LaunchDarkly, it's going to be a string. To do this, we can simply add on json.loads around that variation get object, and this will convert it into a true JSON object called dbinfo that we can use within our connection string now. From here, We'll go in and we'll start to replace aspects of this connection string with parts of that DB info object. You can see I've already set it up to use F strings here, so I can start to bring this out, throw my brackets around, and I can do DB info, DB host for the actual uh, host name. That DB host object, if we look back in launch darkly, relates back to where it's actually going to connect, going to, connect to. The next one we have is this DB name object. So we'll switch back in and we'll go down and find the DB name. Do DB info with DB name. We can use the username and password the same because we kept them obviously super secure uh, and the same between the two databases. Again, just a uh, word of warning, you should never put these in plain text in your configuration file. This is here for a demo, so just keep that in mind. So we'll go ahead and save this configuration. So now what we have is when this flag is evaluated, it'll bring this code into, or it'll bring this, uh, these flag values into the connection string as needed. Now this is gonna work out great for when we do these git objects here in a second, but we're gonna have to run into a problem when it comes to post and few. Let's give this a test right now just to make sure that everything is working the way we expect it to. So we'll do a quick git against our database. Maintenance mode is still on, so let's go ahead and repeat on an interval again. Let's go back to one and start that. Let's go ahead and play with the user targeting of our maintenance mode and have it work for dev users to not receive that maintenance. We'll switch back into Launch Darkly, go into Feature Flags, and go into our original maintenance mode flag. We'll target users to match these rules. We'll select an attribute of groups, starts with, and we can use dev. And we'll have this set to disabled. Now when we switch back in, we can see that we're re resolving our database successfully again. If I turn off that dev header, we'll see that I receive maintenance mode is enabled. So we're using this header value to change the uh, resulting flag uh, values that we get back. So maintenance mode is disabled for anyone who's in the dev group. And we can see that it is actually resolving back a database information because we're able to actually query successfully. Since the targeting is off, it's resolving the false value. So it's receiving either the fallback or the false from launch darkly. Let's go ahead and turn that flag on for dev users now and see what results we get. Head back into feature flags. We'll set this to default to the laptop, but we'll add a rule in once again for groups, starts with dev to cloud and enable the flag. We can see now that we're receiving our new database, we've got our new schema in place. We're successfully able to query. We're getting a couple of different entries uh, that, that match somewhat to our on-prem with a different ID number in front of them. So we were able to successfully push down this new configuration using this flag. Now, what will happen when we try to do an insert against this new database? Let's stop our calling here, select our post and try to insert and see what happens. We can see that we've inserted the record successfully, but we're now receiving a null value for the location because we didn't provide it. This is because our schema doesn't match the new database that's in place. We could have made this database require that column to be filled out, which is obviously an oversight, but now we have this null database field that we want to clean up. 
Let's go ahead and use the delete function that we had had previously and see if we can remove that number seven out and fix this. We'll go down to delete, choose our number seven, and we'll send our query to delete the rec record. So we can see that's deleted now, and we'll get back into building out our application code to be a little bit more resilient. So here we have the code that handles the insert function, and it's still configured from our previous, uh, our previous setup in our old database. We need to include that new location field as part of the schema. We want to go ahead and wrap this in a feature flag as well, so that when the new database is used, we can actually be calling this one, or we actually call the correct one, rather. Let's go ahead and create our feature flag, and we'll call it migrate equals We'll call it db migrate. We'll use our user object. And we'll say a default of false. We'll copy that flag name, move back into launch darkly, and create our new flag. db migration schema. New schema. Old schema. We'll save our flag. When this is true, it'll resolve the new schema. When it's false, it'll use the old schema. We'll want to go ahead and attach this to the same rules that we had set up before. So we'll go ahead and do groups starts with dev to the new schema. Have everyone else receive the old schema. Before we go ahead and save this and enable it, let's go ahead and set up our code a little bit better for it. So if migrate is true, else run the stuff we already have. And we'll modify this slightly for our new schema. Username and location. We'll add on a second variable here. And then we'll also add on val location and save our code. Let's do a real quick git to make sure everything's working still. Our git is good. Let's switch back over now and enable this targeting. Now, once we go in and post, we can add on our location field and hit send, and we can receive our updated value. It's now ID number eight because we deleted seven, and we see Jake has been added and has the US central region. Now that we have a few differences in our database, let's go back up to our Git request. Let's do a repeat on interval of every two seconds and start our call. We can see that we're getting the new value that we had just inserted. And if we go into the header and we disable our group value, we can see this return back to the other offline side of the database. Let's go ahead and turn off that maintenance mode now and bring back the API into its uh, normal state. So back into feature flags, our maintenance mode is completed. So we'll disable that. And we can see that we're getting the previous database that's our local on-premises database. If I turn back on our dev mode, I'm getting the cloud-based database. In this example, we are able to show how using LaunchDarkly's feature flags could push configurations down to a database, but also change the path that a user was getting when they would go to access that database. When we had our dev mode enabled, we were able to hit the cloud-based database. When that dev mode was disabled, we were hitting the local on-premises database. We did all of this behind our normal users receiving a maintenance mode flag when our dev users wouldn't receive it. This is just another example of a way that we can use feature flags to drive the way applications and systems are consumed functionally and enhance the way that APIs and web platforms are built and applications are built. Really hope you enjoyed this video. Look forward to visiting with you again soon. Take care.